All right, here we are. Welcome back to Book Wave, the final episode of Crime and Punishment. How you guys doing, Matt and Will? How did you enjoy the book? What were your uh, first impressions? I mean, I am just glad that we're through this now. The the final act and epilogue had a lot of a lot of action going on in it. So again, it was an easier read, but with everything that's been going on this week, I honestly didn't retain a lot of it, it was one of those things where it's like, I need to do this, I get it done, it's done, and switch back to autopilot, and nothing really jumped out at me too much. I mean, Figdrilov, his his role in this act was surprising, I think, to yeah. say the least. I really didn't see it the way that unfolded coming. Are you referring to his uh, trip to America? <laughs> <laughs> that and uh, even before with Dunya. Yeah, and sure. and the fact that he might be a pedophile. Yeah, you see him go through some fever dreams, and uh, he has his betrothed as well, who happens to be just sixteen years old. Yeah, yeah. So that that was weird. I mean, th- I knew something was weird with this guy in the in the previous acts because he's like supporting the Marmeladov's children and. He might have murdered a slave, and he might have murdered his wife, but it, no one can say for sure. And he's doing stuff in the hemisphere of, of Rodia, but not really. Like it, 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 his intentions were never clear, and, and now we discover that it was this big game to try and get Dunya, and that ended pretty explosively for him. I almost feel like Savidra Gailov was like a kind of a mirror to Rodia. Like, just an example to see, hey, this is where Rogia could have ended up. Yeah, he was, like, the much more successful version. He was a lot sneakier and cunning than than Rodia. And he had his wits about him much longer than Rodia did. And I think that's what Dostoevsky was trying to reflect, was that this is, this is what cunning really looks like. This is how you actually mastermind a plan. And perhaps how you successfully get away with a murder. But in the end, we, we know how that ended up. It's like seeing two different versions of who can commit murder. And, and the third version, who can't commit murder, because Dunya sh- shoots twice and both times doesn't kill him and then eventually puts down the gun because she doesn't have the gall to take a man's life. And I think that's a really important part in this whole, whole act is that whether it's Sfig Love or Rodia, they had it in them, but Dunya didn't, and that's important. Also, the mind game, the mind game between the, those two are very fascinating because when they go out and sit down at the tavern and then talk about what, what they... It's almost as if he's playing, just kind of slowly opening... Rokosinov's mind a little bit, one by one, kind of like what a therapist, and just trying to get him to see the guilt that he has ridden, while also pursuing his cutting, cutting uh, details on what he wants to do. Yeah, it was very weird seeing uh, Spigdrilov in the tavern, dare say almost aristocratic-like. With the, yeah, it, the children from the street performing for him and being on good terms with the tavern keeper and all that. All is jolly, and then he sits down and talks to Rick and thinks that he's, he has full control. Mm-hmm. And the interview with uh, Porfiry Petrovich and Raskilnikov at the beginning of this act, that was interesting. That, I didn't, yeah. that snuck up on me, too. That was like a game of mental jujitsu right there. Yeah, like, he he knew what was up, and he put him in a position to actually sort of have some redemption. But he knew, like, and he always knew. Like, the, this guy's a psychology major. Like, he knew who did the crime, and he was not afraid to admit it. Yeah, in the first couple of chapters, they keep bringing back up the metaphor of fresh air. I think uh, mm-hmm. Savidra Gailov and... Uh... Or free, both make the same statement to him, like, oh, we just need some fresh air. Everything will be cleared up. Which is like a big reference to Siberia, I'm pretty sure. The whole notion of you need some fresh air, I think, has to do with the labor camps in Siberia. 
Hmm. That the hard labor that uh, criminals are punished to and, and the exposure to the fresh air in the, the Siberia, it, it changes you, it shapes you, and, and turns you into something better. That there is a retribution and, and a repentance that happens. Mm-hmm. And that, that kind of gets expanded on in the epilogue as well. Yes, absolutely. I don't know how much of this you want to spoil, but it's a pretty I don't old think, book. <laughs> I don't think any of this is a spoiling. Like, if you don't know now, um, let me just say it. Don't kill people. <laughs> and if you do kill people, it's going to look a lot like this. A big theme in this book is just, like, owning up to your sins, basically. Not necessarily crimes, but... Yeah, just it's con- crime just and... Confessing, just confessing your sins. You release part of that burden, but you still stay with it. Still stays with you throughout. I think a more accurate title for this book would be "Crime and Punishment and Punishment and Punishment and Punishment and Punishment." Crime and Punishment squared, <laughs> like cubed and then squared. <laughs> Crime part one, punishment parts two through six plus epilogue. But it's nice because he definitely has his come to Jesus moment in. Uh, St. Petersburg, and then for some reason, Svigdrilov gives Sonia enough money to to stay by his side in Siberia, and and you see this beautiful romance at the end, like where they completely know who each other is and accept them, and are willing to wait the the eight years in Siberia to to have a, a loving relationship. And he's got the New Testament that he he studies at night and fosters that relationship and i think that's that's interesting and i think the more disturbing part about the epilogue is that when rikosanov is in the internment camps he is going back into that cycle from part one he still believes the mortality of murder his own version of mortality in regards to murder and it feels like it just goes back to his I don't know how to describe it, but it just, he kind of goes back into a full circle of what murder would be like based on his own philosophical belief. And even the inmates are catching up on this. Like, are they going to be infected by his morality when it comes to murder? Yeah, there was one part where I'm not sure if he was just kind of hallucinating this in a fever dream or if it was actually happening, but all of the other inmates were like calling him an infidel and saying we have to have to get rid of him because he doesn't believe in God. Right. Yeah, it's it's hard to determine how much of it is actual experience and how much of it is is those fever dreams that he keeps going through. Hmm. You have the same kind of a experience in the Savijagailov chapters too. Hmm. But I have I have one quote that I picked out from the from the epilogue. Why does my action strike them as so horrible, he said to himself. Is it because it was a crime? Was it meant by crime? My conscience is at rest, of course. It was a legal crime, of course. The letter of the law was broken, and blood was shed. Well, punish me for the letter of the law, and that's enough, of course. In that case, many of the benefactors of mankind who snatched power for themselves instead of inheriting it ought to have been punished at their first steps. But those men succeeded... And so they were right, and I didn't, and so I had no right to have taken that step. That's uh, a good quote. Yeah, that was right towards the end of the book, before his last moment with Sonia. So, I don't know, it, it feels like he's kind of coming to terms with his own theory, while he's also losing faith in his own theory. <laughs> yeah, full circle. Mm. Yeah, I think it was really this exercise in him testing out his theory and and coming to terms with the fact that perhaps he was right and that he wasn't a Superman and that had he been the man that he wrote about, he would have been just fine. But in committing the crime, he confirmed with, with no uncertainty that he is not deserving of it. Yeah, and Napoleon committed as many crimes as he could possibly muster, and he got away with it, so he still falls into the title of one of his extraordinary men. Mm-hmm. I, I just keep thinking about Napoleon. Like that's a, that's a funny idol to have, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Like, it's pretty much that era's Hitler. 
I guess that's a good way of putting it, isn't it? Yeah. Like, minus the racial genocide kind of thing. Still tried to take over the world. Yeah, I mean, there was a, ro a lot of racial genocide still mixed into it, like with the native people, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a bit of uh, racial bits in this book, too. Doesn't seem to be too kindly to the Jews in this particular piece of text. I think that was kind of a theme going back quite, quite several hundred years that was kind of building up to World War II for quite, quite a few generations. Yeah, I think it's just a simple observation during that time that Dostoevsky wrote it. Uh, yeah, so anyways, I'd say that anti-Semitism would be an expected theme in, like, a lot of works dating back from the 1900s to zero. All the way back to the Romans, you know? Yeah. What more can we say about crime and punishment and punishment and punishment and punishment and punishment and punishment? If you want to experience the full cycle of both the moral and immoral effects of murder, read this book. I think we've pretty much covered that. Yeah, I, I recommend this book for every living being. Um, I will never read it again. Yes, we recommend you read it once. That's what we said in the last video, but... <laughs> it's important to read it once. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's one of those stories that lasts for a long time. Yeah, and I think, it's, we, it's, owe it, I think we owe it to those old it's stories. Real, it's hard to put down, but impossible to... Yeah. Also, don't kill people. <laughs> and on that note... Okay, thanks, bye. All right, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff.